Plants are all around us. So often we forget that they are even there or don't even realize that they are living organisms. Plants are so important and give so much to the world. Their diversity brings beauty and balance to ecosystems. Hi, I'm Lauren with the Atlanta Botanical Garden. Today, we're going to examine plant parts to see how their differences help them survive in various environments, while also inspiring artists with their crazy shapes, textures, and colors. As we go through each plant part, we will draw what we observe and also give examples of how students can experiment with different media through plant parts. Finally, we'll check out various examples of art in the garden to see how professional artists have been inspired by the plants within our collection. At the very end, we'll share some additional ideas and resources of ways you can incorporate art into your plant science lesson. Let's get started. For our exploration, we will be using a whole plant along with celery, blueberries, and beans. In addition, we will use watercolor paint, stamp pads, crayons, glue, rubber mallet, tape, pencils, and paper. We are going to draw and observe this plant commonly known as a vinca, or a rosy periwinkle. This plant, like most plants, has six basic plant parts. Can you name them? That's right! Most plants have roots, stems, leaves, flowers, fruits, and seeds. Even though most plants share these traits, they can look very different from one plant to the next. Let's check out these different parts together, starting with the roots. Here are the roots of the vinca. Let's draw the roots of this plant together. Notice how they branch out in all directions. Roots absorb or take in water for the plant and also keep the plant steady in the ground so that even a strong wind won't knock it over. Roots of plants can make excellent paintbrushes. Simply remove dirt from roots and dip into watercolor paint to create lines of different sizes. Experiment with different kinds of roots for various effects. Now that we've explored roots, let's go see some examples in the garden. Not all roots grow underground. Some plants grow in trees and have aerial roots, or roots that get their water and nutrients from the air. The roots of the cissus vine hang in the air above the floor of the rainforest and allow the plant to grow higher in the canopy, closer to the light. Other plants, like corn, and even many rainforest trees have thick roots that grow from the stem above the ground down into the soil below. These are called stilt roots and give the plant added support for their very tall stems, even in shallow soil. Next, let's take a look at stems as we draw them together. Stems carry water and nutrients absorbed by the roots to other parts of the plant and give structure to the plant, holding up leaves and flowers. This plant has one major stem and another smaller stem to the side. Stems make excellent stamps and prints because of the patterns left by the tubes that carry water and nutrients through the plant. Celery is a great stamper because of its size and sturdiness. Try using different kinds of stems to see what prints they make. Now, let's go explore more stems together in the garden. Some stems are green and flexible, while others are brown and woody. Some are rough and covered with bark like that of our champion tulip poplar tree, while others like bamboo are smooth and segmented. Some stems are tall and slender, and still others like many succulents are thick and contain water. The ant plant's main stem, called a codex, is swollen and has many holes and channels on the inside. In the wild, ants will live in the stem providing defense, pollination, and even nutrients for the plant in exchange for food and shelter. Now it's time to discover my favorite part of the plant, the leaf. Notice that the leaves of this plant come in pairs that are across from each other. Scientists call this opposite arrangement. Leaves are responsible for making food for the plant through the process of photosynthesis. Each leaf combines water from the roots along with carbon dioxide and sunlight that they absorb to create a sugar called glucose. The veins in leaves are beautiful to capture through leaf rubbings. Tape a leaf down to a flat surface and secure a piece of paper over it. 
Using the flat side of an unwrapped crayon, gently rub over the leaf until it magically appears on your paper. Use this technique to capture and compare various types of leaves. Now, let's check out some other magical leaves in the garden. Leaves come in all shapes, sizes, and textures. Many leaves in the rainforest are giant and have darker colors, allowing them to absorb more sunlight under the shaded canopy. In the desert, leaves are often small and lighter green to conserve water and protect the plant from excess sun. Most conifers have needle-like or scaly leaves that stay green all year, while other trees have leaves that change colors with the seasons. Some leaves are spiky and other leaves are soft and fuzzy. Perhaps the most interesting leaves trap and digest insects. The leaves of these carnivorous plants still practice photosynthesis and make their own food, but rely on prey to provide them with added nutrients that cannot be attained by roots in their nutrient-poor soil. Now that we've studied leaves, let's look at some flowers. This plant has many buds and flowers. Each of its flowers has five petals. Flowers help plants reproduce and make seeds. Most flowers are made up of many parts, including petals, sepals, stamen, pollen grains, and an ovary. Many flowers contain pigments that help attract pollinators. We can actually capture some of these colors through flower pounding. Place a flower upside down on your paper on a solid surface. Cover the flower with a scrap piece of paper and gently pound with a mallet. Peel the paper and flower away to reveal a print. Try it out with flowers of different shapes and colors. Now let's see what kind of flowers are in bloom in the garden. You can tell a lot about a plant's pollinators just by looking at its flowers. Flowers pollinated by wind or water are small and bland and don't produce a scent or nectar. These wind-pollinated flowers are the ones most likely to make you sneeze. Flowers pollinated by animals are usually much more colorful and fragrant. Some flowers pollinated by moths may be white and sweet-smelling, while those pollinated by hummingbirds are often red and tube-shaped. Some flowers even display colors that humans can't see to attract bees and butterflies. Many orchid flowers have strong fragrances. Some smell like chocolate or oranges or rotting meat or even corn chips. Once a flower is pollinated, it forms a fruit with seeds. Fruits protect and contain the seeds of a plant. These seeds are important because inside each one is an embryo or a baby plant waiting to sprout. This plant has produced several seed pods. Let's draw them together. Blueberries are a great fruit to use in art. Their skin contains dyes that you can use to draw and color. Rub the blueberry on the surface of the paper until the color runs out, and then pick up another. For seed art, beans can't be beat. Beans are a common seed that we eat and come in different shapes and colors. Use glue to secure different kinds of beans on the paper to make a mosaic pattern or picture. Now that we're done, let's find some fruits and seeds in the garden. Many fruits help the seeds spread further away from the parent plant, especially those yummy to small animals. They eat the fruit and pass the seeds on in their droppings. Interesting fruits here at the garden include pineapple, eggplant, and cedar berries, to name a few. Some fruits are brightly colored, and others, like kiwi and pawpaws, are brown and green. Some seeds, like chestnut tree seeds, are surrounded by a hard and spiky covering to protect them from predators. Many conifers keep their seeds in cones that can open or close depending on the temperature and weather conditions. Maple seeds have a wing-like structure that allow them to fly through the air, while other seeds can float in water. The very plant parts that help plants grow, reproduce, and survive also make them beautiful and unique. It's easy to see why artists are inspired by plant life. Now that we have drawn, observed, and used these different plant parts to create art of our own, let's see how professional artists create pieces in the garden that interpret plant parts in various ways. Some artists depict plants in realistic ways. 
In the garden, you can see photographs of plants along with botanical illustrations or scientifically accurate portraits of plants done with pencils, pens, or watercolors. During the garden summer 2021 exhibition, Jason Gamreth's glass sculptures enlarged many different kinds of plants, like orchids, pitcher plants, and aloes, to giant sizes. Through the use of metal, glass, and vibrant colors, the artist is able to highlight the diversity of plants and their parts. Other art in the garden does not look exactly like plants or their parts, but are inspired by nature or complemented. These art installations are abstract pieces. Examples of abstract art inspired by nature include the Chihuly glass installations in Storza Woods, the Parterre Garden, and in the Visitor Center. The Nepenthes piece in the Visitor Center has some of the same lines and shapes as those seen in pitcher plants without looking exactly like a pitcher plant. While the summer 2021 poetic kinetic sculpture Dream Flora does not look like a plant either, its colors are similar to those seen in flower fields swaying in the wind and invites the viewer to look up into the trees to observe. Finally, some works were created by artists using natural materials. The summer 2021 exhibit at Atlanta Botanical Garden Gainesville featured giant bird sculptures created from various branches and recycled materials. Perhaps the most famous sculpture using natural materials in the Atlanta Botanical Garden is the earth goddess herself. She is a metal sculpture packed with dirt and planted with 20,000 annual plants. The textures and colors of the flowers used give her long locks of hair added style. You too can be an artist and share your knowledge and inspiration of plants through your work. Besides the drawing and plant part art we've created, you could use your body to act out the different parts of the plant and discuss why each part is important. You could also dissect a flower and use the parts to create a new image or collect natural items and make a sculpture telling a story. Paint using natural dyes or pigments that come from plants like chlorophyll or pick your favorite habitat and design a plant with adaptations that would help it survive those conditions. Do you have any other ideas? Get creative! Thanks for watching. For additional resources and information on opportunities to bring the garden into your classroom, please visit our website at www.atlantabg.org forward slash schools dash tours.